are certainly ready for a game number three. Though we certainly don't want to end it here. Seattle, do we want to see some more Dota? Here in the Cathedral in Seattle, we may just be witnessing the final game of the Grand Finals, but I'm sure a lot of us hope for so much more. And that all depends on Game and Gladiators. I mean, they have been the ones to run the gauntlet through all of these majors. They were looking like the best team of the year until they ran into Team Spirit. Until Team Spirit ramped up in just the right time, shown up for championships, and they have only lost two games in this entire tournament, Avery. They are 43 and seven in their last 50. This team is looking unstoppable. Is there anything Gaming Gladiators can do to halt this momentum, even just a little bit? You have to play Dota. There's no way around it. You have to meet this team on their plane and give them a taste of their own medicine because you came in with a plan, but everybody has a plan until Team Spirit punches you in the face. And right now you're laying on the ground trying to figure out what the hell just happened in the first two games. Your plan did not work. Whatever you thought it was going to happen in the games one and two, it fell flat. So right now, Team Spirit are in control of this draft meta. They're in control of the series, and they're dictating the pace in these games. They're dictating the team fight. So you have to meet them there and beat them. You have to outplay them. You have to start winning these team fights, scaling into the late game. You are not going to run this team over, which means you got to find some more momentum going past that 30 or 40 minute mark. It's not been Gaiman's MO this entire lower bracket run, but Hey, you're in a dire situation at Grand Final. You don't have another chance here. You are at the total limit. So figure it out fast, make the adjustments, and get cranking. This is a draft that is heading in that direction, right? A lot more team fight, a lot more scaling presence. Yep. Spectre AA here designed to put Yatoro in a tough position. We've seen the AA be a counter to CK for a lot of this tournament in terms of limiting the lifesteal interactions. Of course, it can also have a huge impact for the Dazzle as this game progresses into the late game. So I think these are much more even lineups in terms of what happens past the 40 or 50 minute mark. There's not some crazy inevitable scale outside of maybe Dazzle Spear Breaker doing crazy Dazzle Spear Breaker things and Celery in trouble. In trouble in the bottom lane and that is going to be your first blood. Collapse will claim it with a bash. Of course, a little luck goes a long way. A classic Team of Spirit strategy going back to their first TI victory in a career yeah, yeah, yeah. boot. Courier pick off as well. Look at that. Duraggio even like taking himself outside the lane to block the hard camp because this lane is already going a little bit awkward for them. The mid lane's not looking much better. We're 12 and 4 on Laurel over this melee range versus melee matchup. It's not a fun one. You should expect the Dazzle to win, but Laurel is already taking commanding lane. And then we've got your Toro, 11 and 2. Now the Brewmaster is keeping pace, but he's certainly not slowing down the carry of Team Spirit. So Gaming Gladiator's got to be able to, to uh, hold this momentum a little bit further here. Bit of damage on to Ace. They're turning it back around, but Dofu's here to be able to help him out. Nice shot to get the extra bit of damage on two heroes. Yeah, double proc. Win the War of Attrition. I think these silence can go fine for Gaiman over the course of the lanes. Uh, they don't look too terrifying to me. Uh, I think the Brew can fight back with the help of Morta. Just a very tough hero to trade into. That mid lane is what I'm worried about, though, right? It's Dazzle versus Melee. I mean, Pango has some escape mechanisms, but if you get some roam going through with the poison adding up, it can be deadly. Every single time, Seller wants to be able to stop that hard camp opportunity. He does risk getting gone on by Mira and Collapse. This time around, he's fine. The Shard inadvertently kind of helps him out as he's pushed underneath his tower. Just try and get as many pulls off as you can in this lane. Boost the XP up for both heroes as they both really want and need it here. You're not going to be able to shut Collapse down, which, I mean, that's a worrying factor, right? A Spear Breaker with absolute free form, it's going to have a fast Midas, is what Collapse is going to have here. He's going to have his choice. And it'll be quite powerful going into that mid game. So you got to be able to strike back in these small skirmishes, get the ults up, particularly the Brewmaster Primal Split, the Rolling Thunder here, very powerful spells. If you can get them fast. And of course, A Blast coming in on top of it with Vortex amping up all this magic damage and put that mini haunt to use on the step. Real quickly, want to give a, a shout out to our observers, our hardworking observers who have been keeping us through this entire tournament. Ace. Maybe in some trouble here, Maposhka. He's trying to dodge all of these ghosts. He doesn't want to leave the calling. He'll take that extra bit of damage to try and risk it, but he does end up falling as a result. And now Ace, he'll have some oh, nice helping spear. in from Tofu. Beautiful dead shot to push him back in and gaining gladiators. A very clutch fight there for them. A Tofu and Ace get a big win in their off lane. That's the strength of the Morita dual lane that they're looking for. This is why Cyril's been a first pick for them for a lot of these series. 
They're very confident in what Tofu can do on it in the early game. And now he has some roam options. I don't think you can leave Ace in the one on two, but if you can get some breathing room like this and look towards mid, maybe you can get some damage poke, help skew this lane back in Quinn's favor. Because he is still getting known. 31 and 10 on Laurel, almost doubling Quinn up here. He got the Courier as well. Quinn with a slight misstep will hurt his regen fairing. That just means more pressure going to build up between Laurel and his melee foe. Just not much you can do against the Poison Touch here. Yeah, he, this is looking like Quinn kind of needs one of his supports to die just to refill that bottle. And Celery may grant him that wish. He's going to get a double blood grenade before he goes. So this may be a fair trade-off. Interachu can claim his life, and he does manage to get it. It puts an early level into that Desolate, and it's just the added damage they need. Honestly, I think Celery's okay with that. Solo XP for Darachi on a Spectre. He gets to collect all these creeps under the tower without any pressure. Pretty happy about that exchange with a very defensive-oriented lane where, I'm, you know, what are you doing aggressively with AA Spectre? It's all about getting farm and XP down here. And there's that TP rotation to fill out Quinn's bottle. And try and help with the six-minute rune. We'll see if he's able to do so. But Team Spirit, not going to worry about the runes here. Instead, they try and win this offlane situation where Ace and Topher were doing pretty well for themselves. They bring three heroes to the matter to bring down Ace if they can get him. Slow down by the Blood Grenade. They only need a couple more hits. They've got more blood where that came from, apparently. Gives them over that Lotus, and that's enough. Evasion with the Haze, enough for Ace to just walk okay. off here. I lied. They do care about that uh, the power room because they brought Collapse to secure it. Not just that, but also the kill on Quinn. That's just going to secure the double check for Laurel. He's going to walk all the way top and get himself a shield rune. Putting this matchup to good use, giving Quinn a taste of his own medicine here with the roam. Maybe not expected out of the offlaner, but that is a hell of a rotation from Collapse and gets a lot of momentum going to this Dazzle right now. And this is a pressure point you're going to have to respond to. This is a hero that scales very hard in Dota right now. Pretty strong early game for Team Spirit. They're going to look to try and fight back, but Quinn with a nice rotation, just eyeing Yatoro up here all alone. We'll get the hit back. If you're just going to keep dying in your lane, you might as well rotate out of it, even if it means you're doing it pre-level 6. So, uh, as you can see, anybody who shows up in the mid lane is going to be run over by the Dazzle, especially if you get the extra vision of, like, a Tusk Snowball or the Spirit Breaker charge. You just can't get away from this Poison Touch hit, so... No, especially with these wards behind the tower already. Deep Observer for Team Spirit behind Game in Tier 1. Collapse having a chuckle about that. Yeah, yeah but that was all because Quinn tipped him before the charge even completed. Quinn knew what was coming. He could do nothing to stop it. Well, could have picked a real hero. <laughs> just, <laughs> it's always an option. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> four to four, seven and a half minutes in. Did we trade off Wisdom Runes? Yeah. Yes, that was the Hero. one upside of, you know, them going on mid. You guarantee the Wisdom Rune trade, which Celery's definitely happy about. Yeah. I mean, you're saying he's, like, happy to soak up XP here, but it is a weird position for an AA who'd rather just be pulling if nothing else is happening. They'll leave Durante alone in the bottom lane, but a really good use of the dagger will get him over that little cliff area, and Tofu can get some damage back in return. No threat of anybody dying, but a decent punish, and will allow Durante to clean up some CS, but he is being pushed out of lane. Mira's not giving up on it just yet. And the Poshka even rotating down here, potentially throwing that Ink Swell into the Breaker. I mean, this is a combination we also saw when Breaker was hot that last patch. The Team Spear were very comfortable playing. The Ink Swell Breaker across the map, giving you the guaranteed setup. This is what the CK is designed to help facilitate. Push the lanes in with CK Illusions, be a ghost on the map, and all of a sudden you get one pickoff and your map just collapses, right? Yeah. On the flip side, Gaming trying to do something similar. If you can set anything up with a Primal split or the rolling thunder then suddenly Tarachu can come in and clean house and this is a smoke designed to find Yatoro but nobody's home Yatoro yeah. they took him out with a phantasm he sent it back instead Quinn and Ace will bite down on that but it doesn't matter too much that bait they still get some pretty good damage onto the tower one thing to note about that uh, inkswell combination with the spirit breaker oh. Thought they were going to go on to Mira, but Mira is going through the portal. They don't have a stun to stop him. He gets the other side. Jirachi pursues. Dagger does hit him. Yeah, he's pretty damn slow, and he's going to hit him with another dagger. Mira, he needs the help from the Spirit Breaker. He has a snowball to buy a moment. Collapse, pops his ultimate, immediately goes for the kill on the Tofu. See if they can trade things out here for the shard and the calling. That actually protects him there. Collapse doesn't want to trade two for one, so he's going to go ahead and give up on that. They cannot afford to give any more kills to this Duraccio Spectre. Gonna rotate Laurel bottom. They really want to punish Duraccio. There it is. Coming back. The Inkswell charge in, chaining the stuns and adding up on the damage. Spirit Breaker got that 5% buff. The movement speed as damage got buffed up by 5%. 
That was enough to bring him back into the meta, but then that's even more if you add in this Inkswell movement speed buff. Uh, it's a deadly combination for reasons. I like that rotation from Laurel. That's such a heads-up read there. You can just walk down the lane. There's no vision here. They probably had a read because Celery's been mid the whole time, right? It's going to limit where your observers are going to go. Just gets a really cheeky kill on the Spectre. Nice shard to buy some time. Good driving by Quinn. Gets around that little speed bump in the way. Hopefully, Duracho can finish him up, but not quite. No, Shao Grave comes in for Law. Perfect timing there. Quinn does manage to get some decent damage on his Toro. And he's he he here. He makes the difference. He makes it so Team Spear can no longer fight bad. It's an overwhelming amount of team fight that he'll put to work to bring down Yutoro. And it looks like he's going to chase down Maposhka. Mira really trying for this one. He might just get himself killed in the process. Will it be good enough? Maposhka still does. And sure enough, Mira, he's going to be in trouble as well. Good use of the shard blocking him out, but he still falls. Cannot stop. Game in Gladiators as they bring all five learning from Team Spirit, perhaps. The only way to beat these guys in a team fight is you got to bring everybody to the table. And that's why I think this draft feels a lot better for them to play. They can connect the heroes a lot faster. The Spectre facilitates that at a tremendous rate. And then Ace is just on a hero where even if his lane phase wasn't spectacular, which it has been this game, that Primal split into a fast Radiance is going to give them all the team fight they need. The CK does not have free engagements, where I felt like in the first two games, Yatoro's connections were uncountered, right? Yeah. He goes in with a Weaver, goes in with a Faces for it, gets what he wants and gets out. This game, Yatoro finds himself in a pickle mid where he just can't escape, pays the price. An 0 and 3 start for Yatoro got up here. Perhaps one of the rougher early games we've seen from the entire tournament. That is a very good position for Gaiman to be in. It's Which shut down a lot of the pace. Marl's going to have to pick up that, that little bit of slack, right? Yes. He's going to have to step in with this Dazzle. But the Dazzle, I feel like, isn't a hero you you really want to utilize just yet. It feels like that Aghanim Scepter is such a key timing. You can't afford to delay that by getting into some risky engagements. And this hero is like Tinker in some ways. I like guess first item, kind of easy to get to. You're a powerhouse when you get it, but then you fall into a valley. And it's like the next two or three you have to get to before you really come online the ultra late. And those team fights start to become impossible for the enemy. That is a period where Gaiman can strike with this Radiance, which is going to be coming out fast on Ace this game. And just take the team fight to Team Spirit, which is where, again, you have to meet this team. You have to be willing to take the 5-on-5s five and win them and translate it into objectives. You can't just go for the other first. Smoke across the map. They failed to get the initiation on Collapse. We're going to try and join Quinn for the power rune. Quinn's going to need that help, too. He silenced up the Poison Touch. The Inkswell's on top of him, but he does manage to get away with the Swashbuckle just in time. The charge is going to complete. Collapse, he's got his ultimate. He may not even need it, though. The yeah, Poison Touch slowed him down so much. And Maposhka is going to TP out the shot. Oh, oh he's so close, but it runs out. It doesn't get there in time. And now a snowball to the other side to meet Zoraccio, as it is now him who is surrounded by Team Spirit heroes. Too many to count. And that is a Midas Chaos Knight coming in and cleaning up the enemy carry there. Yatoro gets some XP, a much better turnaround for him as opposed to the last river fight where they're still missing that tier one. So maybe a smoke and connection that Quinn and the gang just didn't expect considering, you know, they're missing that objective that went down in the previous fight. Yep. But it seems like Team Spirit take advantage of that uh, bit of an overlook from Quinn. And now collapse. Highest net worth in the game, but Game of Gladiators don't want to slow down just yet. They still have that Rolling Thunder. Didn't use it in the last fight, so Tofu and Celery think to themselves that if they can get the right kind of initiation here with the Rolling Thunder, they can follow it up with the Ice Blast, but Yutoro? Uh-oh, he's in the staircase. It's going to be very awkward. The Soul Bite does actually latch onto the two of them as Spectre jumps into no the mix as well. Please tell me they're going to hit him. Oh, they barely got it. In the fountain, he will go down. It wasn't even the blast, it was like an urn tick or something that got him in the end. Post that grave. That was a nasty soul bind. Something they're going to have to think about with Duracho haunting in. He, they he will he find responds. the big pick. Ace is so close to his radiance, he could not afford to get picked off here. So at the first sign of danger, he uses his primal split. Though you could see the Spirit Breakers pretty good answer to those Brulings. No threat of dying here, but it's something to think damn. about later into the game. I mean, normally the Dispel and Tornado is a problem for this hero, but... Doesn't look like it so far, and like you said, Radiance 300 off for Ace. He just wants to get his big item and get the farm rate going. Still having a very good game on this Brewmaster. Yeah, considering the Lone Druid game, where he's exactly. so close to the Radiance for so long, I don't think he wants to risk that happening again. And Radiance is an incredibly powerful item in this meta. It's better the faster you get it. In a lot of those games, Ace just didn't get it at a time where he could take the map or the fight's over with it. This is going to be a game where he has a very good chance to do that. As Yatoro still behind, right? Yeah. This is a double Midas lineup for Team Spirit. They have one on the CK, one on the Spear Breaker, which, you know, has become the de facto build for the XP getting to the late game talents. Is going to slow the team fight presence down. 
I really feel like if gaming can get a fight going in the next two to three minutes here, they're pretty favored, especially with Diffusal and Radiance coming out at the same time. This is a huge damage power spike. You want to get something going with it, and you want to get it going now. They go for it. The Radiance is complete, though, on Ace, but they know the Primal Split is on cooldown. Now, this is a beefy target to just go into, especially when you don't have the global ability to connect. I mean, how much does Collapse oh, think he can chunk through here? Tofu just left him alone. Tofu was needed to be able to disrupt this combination, but now Ace is left alone, speeds himself away. Somehow the Inkswell didn't go off in time, but Poshka didn't pop that one at Jirachi. was like, okay, now it's my opportunity. Hello, Maposhka. Oh, almost got him with a fear shot there on the left-hand side, but Maposhka still dies. Collapse still in trouble, has a charge instead. Off through the TP out, but that doesn't make it. Calculations not on point here. Yeah, he could have just charged the other side of the map. Maybe he didn't have a good target, but there was a mid wave. They will collect a three extra this recall. Such an him. important kill, too. Gaining gladiators with the ice blast on top of Laurel. Now, Collapse and Laurel, who were very much needed to be able to buy Yatoro time. Now they've both fallen. And now you're invading enemy triangle. This is where gaming want to strike. They want to strike hard on the map right now. Gain a lot of the momentum in this game. They have the supports to follow up on the core initiations. They have a crap ton of damage in the tank. As long as they can see heroes. And with Darachu able to join any of these goes, suddenly this map has collapsed pretty fast for Team Spirit. And Ags on the Tazzle try and stem some of this bleeding, but right now this crowd, they want to see a game four. They want to see Game and Strike back in this game three. And they are delivering. Yeah, I'm not even convinced those are all Game and Gladiators fans. They might just be Dota fans who want to be able to see more from a grand finals between these two teams. But it's still a long road ahead for Game and Gladiators because they're only 2K net worth up. They've hit some timings, yes, but they still have to worry about the double hand of Midas. They have to play this clean. They need to be able to get good executions, but they can't afford to use any pickoffs. Good roll in from Quinn from behind, though, trapping Team Spirit. Uh, shot goes out, looking for more. The Dazzle was shown there. Quinn getting in front of him. Blocks him out with the swash buckle. Slows him down with the inhibit from the defuse of plate. Allows Jirachio to do the damage. He pops a shallow grave. Laurel, he really wants well, to that off Quinn. Will he get that kill? The poison touch. He's got a regen. A Lotus given over to him as well. Good plays from Gaming Gladiators. Give him the extra bit of regen he needs. And now he can pop the regeneration in his bottle for a full heal. Max efficiency right now. All Team Spirit can do is cut some waves with their double Midas heroes and, and go late because right now it is all gaming on the momentum chart and a full vessel was completed very fast here from Tofu. That even gives you more damage. Vessel plus A blast is nasty in these team fights when you're throwing the vortexes down, particularly versus Dazu wants to just heal through with the inverse waves and get that going. Yeah, da you've got Dazzle, you've got the Inkswell heal that, you know, would have been a factor if it wasn't for the all the anti-heal they have. And then also the Chaos Strike, that life steal that the Chaos Knight is so dependent on. And there is no downtime for this lineup. Look at him, burned out of mana. They try and give him over a little bit, see if he can charge his way out of there, but he's silenced up by the calling traps on the corner. And then they use that Storm Panda to be able to catch more. Laurel's gonna die as well. The Dazzle getting no footing in this game. Ace making his presence felt, and this was with a second item, Boots of Travel. So this isn't even some, like, Earth oh, Core item. Oska. Looks like he didn't have a way back to the base, so he tried to skirt on through Gaming Gladiator's side of the map. But he was spotted, and he will be brought down. This Brew Specter combination working wonders right now. His ace is 5-0 and 10. Completely unstoppable. And you can't bring the CK in to really help you here. The Brew is just great versus the hero with the Radiance Burn, the AoE Miss. He has the evasion that Yatoro can't pierce. And not to mention his ult, you can go in, start messing up these CK illusions. Yeah, with the Radiance and the Dispel, yeah, his Chaos Knight's gonna be... So, what are your op I mean, you have to just wait until your Toro's ready to fight, I think. You have to split the map with the Breaker, and this is where Gaiman can continue to try and pick you off, put the Vessel to use, put the Radiance to use. And of course, Duraccio, he's on a hero that doesn't have to, you know, farm up some crazy stacks, doesn't have to go in the fight first. He can just farm the defensive parts of the map. If nothing happens, he's still happy. I mean, you still got a Spectre. Drum for Tofu, just to buff up the team fight even more here. Sporta is doing work, also having a perfect game so far. And the calling is not a spell that these Team Spirit heroes want to fight into. It's, it's annoying for Mira going in with the Snowball. It's annoying for Laurel trying to run in and grave people with low-level Grave. This team fight is very obnoxious right now, and it's going to collect a free Tier 2. So, a Tier 2 at 19 minutes for Game and Gladiators. 
they can actually take away that outpost. They've got a pretty good chokehold on the map. What they desperately need now is just not to slip up anywhere, not allow Team Spirit an opening. So they're building up this net worth lead. It may become insurmountable as long as Team Spirit doesn't pull anything sneaky here. The smoke up, it slips right past Team Spirit. They now, the high ground immediately spots from Aposhka, and Durachio recognizes that that is the hero he wants to get first, and the dead shot bounces over to Yotaro, and hit by the Rolling Thunder. He's trapped, caught, and there's nowhere to go from there. Too many disables on the side of Gaming Gladiators, and they have way too much damage. They need the BKBs on the side of Team Spirit, but they're not going to get them anytime soon. He had it. Oh, no. he had it. Yeah, it was a BKB. Oh. He disassembled in body. He just didn't want to pop it. He didn't have Phantasm. There's no turnaround there. Yeah. He will choose to save it for another day. That is the fifth death for Yatoro here, who has yet to make a single kill in this game. Hey, there's the Dazzle play, though. 20 minutes on the dot. They're going to use the Couriers to uh, use the Aghanim Shadow Wave. He could solo up that. That's the better shard I think they were hoping for. Oh, yeah. Inkswell shard from Aposhka going to be pretty damn nice here. Try and dispel these melee heroes when they go in. Still, I feel like if you're Team Spirit, you're trying to wrap this game out right now. And that is a big paradigm shift from games one and two. Yeah, how do you wrap, though, against a Spectre? And, well, you got this Quinn. He Arch is running one. around with a Pangolier. You're not going to be able to solo in a lane for very long. It only takes a few seconds for Gaming Gladiators to spot the opportunity and jump onto you. An Ice Blast not even needed. Toku has the damage necessary to kill the support by himself. And the really nice thing about what's happening right now for Gaming is this Spectre is doing an amazing job protecting their wards. One of the biggest things you have to combat when you play against Team Spirit is the vision advantage. They had it a lot in Game 1 with that Tree and Protector. They abused it pretty damn well in Game 2. Here, it's Maposhka trying to get out, get vision for the team, to deward these aggressive obs that are doing work for gaming because they know they're there. They're getting taunted on. Yeah. But the cooldown's just so damn low. By the time you're back up, by the time you run there to try and gain anything, they're ready to jump on you again. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's always a little specter bias in the win <laughs> probability. And I think that's fair to say. But this is this is the best game has looked in this series by a large degree. They're continuing to build the momentum. And he can continue to build the single target items who is since Ace is building the, or built the Radiance. So he can just focus on being able to take out a support in a second. He's going to build into an Orchid up next. So now if you're spotted anywhere on the map, Duraccio can guarantee that the Grimshoke dies or the Tusk dies or maybe even some of the cores. He's going to pop it here looking for Mira. They just get the vision on him. They'll spot him now, and there it is. They jump immediately. Snowball tried to put to work, but it just means he's going to be dragged back in. He does manage to get a shard, but unfortunately, Duraccio doesn't care about your blocks there. The Ice Shards does nothing when he has free pathing. Spirit just bleeding out right now. They have no answer to the Spectre on the map. Their supports are way too squishy. They don't have an early aura buy. There's no Beastmaster or anything to, to help protect the backline on the map or help them get lanes out. All three of these cores are just building for themselves, right? It's damage items into BKB. You have two Midas's that are still trying to get the work done. Collapse will try and find a pickoff on Tofu, and this will combine with Maposhka, so they strike back a little bit on the map. Much needed. And finally, they're getting some deep vision out as well. You look at these dire obs. It took Maposhka a while, but these are some visions they can play around at least. Though, of course, the second you get spotted... What? <laughs> Maposhka <laughs> somehow doesn't uh, get spotted by Quinn there. And they have to charge back in. Are they really going to try this a second time? He's got an armor rune. He's so much shield he's got. Maposhka's just going to stay hidden here. The charge canceled by the Spirit Breaker. Rolling Thunder very far away. <laughs> he's just going to initiate from... 3, yeah, because at any point in time, the Spectre can join him as soon as he gets that initiation, but they don't quite catch him. The Ice Blast is going to be stretched out. Yutoro, they see an opportunity to turn. turn this around. Yeah, he's going to go for Duraccio here with the Snowball. The 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 There's so many heroes. They dispel out the Phantasm, but Yutoro himself, he will bring down. He will use his own hand to take down the enemy carry. Now looks to finish up these Brulings if possible. Game and Gladiator one. trying so hard. The last one is going to die. Double kill for Yutoro, and they turn back for Celery. A blink away from Quinn. He cannot afford to get caught here, but he doesn't have a TP. If he gets spotted... They scanned him. They know. Another scan. Uh-oh. 
Quinn's gonna be in for a rude awakening in a second here. He just needs his blink up and he gets hit by the dig joke. Swash will go for the side, but they have the silence on him. The ghost remains with Quinn. He tries to go for a roll up play, but he's got nowhere to roll away to. Those have TP back. But... Stuck in the corner, get some good damage from Swashbuckle. Yeah, too, too many heroes. Really nice scan to finish up that fight, and I mean. A little overextension there under a tier two gives a really good fight to Yatoro. Ace dispelled a lot of the illusions, instantly dealt with some of the DPS, but Ink Swells, the shards, all these little spells adding up, and of course, Duraccio going down first. That's a lot of the damage that's been working for you. Downside of this Orchid build, right? The pickoff game is where it's strong. The five on five, this Orchid's not doing anything for you into the early BKBs here. Team and Spirit strike back, and just like that, Somehow Yatoro is top of the board with from 05 to Tyus net worth. This Midas and the Illusions are doing work on the map right now. I remember this was double Midas lineup plus a dazzle, the the, the hidden yes. tinker. This lineup is gonna start ramping up pretty damn quickly if you give them the space to work with. And right now they've got three cores farming in three different parts of the map after a successful team fight. Game in gladiators. They cannot afford any more slip-ups. They've got Roshan still to be taken here at 25 minutes in. It's also time for Maposhka to deward. One of the problems they were facing earlier in this game, suddenly he can run around with his courier, place a bunch of sentries, make sure there's not the deep vision yeah. that Gaming were playing off of earlier. So now it shifts the onus back on to Gaming in terms of you got to make an aggressive smoke, get vision back on the map, and keep setting up these pickoff plays for Duraccio, who's the one maybe getting picked off here. Jator just walks in blind. Get a free second gun, blade. pull him back in, but the silence is doing a lot of work. Quinn tries to roll up, but collapses. Oh, collapse. The ice blast does manage to grab two of those cores. Roll up the snowball. On to Duraccio. The Toro in trouble. Toro's in big time trouble to give him the shallow grave. Laurel oh, what a shard. BKB, but a beautiful shard block. And on some of these heroes, it's not enough. Toro still falls. And now with the toss up in the air, Laurel will come down to a hard reality. Crash down, but he does have the BKB. And look at that, that heal. heal. That Agonim Scepter with so many units around him. It's so much <laughs> heal. He is not going to die so easily. Gaming Gladiators thought they had an easy target. Oh, but he will fight to the bitter end. He'll bring down Duraccio before he finally falls. Collapse stuck, though, in the silence. The buyback required from Gaming Gladiators because Laurel was too tough of a nut to crack. That looked way closer than it should have been. <laughs> These inverse heals are doing mad work at the end of the fight. Have to respect the person and come out from this dazzle when that A blast has been used earlier on, but still great team fight from Gaming. Started out with Yatoro just walking blind into their triangle and they were ready for him. Shadow Blade did not help him out in that type of fight and that ice blast. It was a beauty from Celery. Landed on pretty much everybody, forces the disengage, and the calling silenced Mira on this jump, right? This yeah. is the problematic aspect of this support matchup. When you go in with the Tuscar, this AoE silence clips you. Your team fight's just a nightmare. Beautiful shards on the flip to block off the pandas from Laurel. Another really heads up play, but damn, the damage is already done at this point, and now it's just a matter of cleaning up, which sounds easier than it actually looked like, right? All of those solutions and rulings play against game in Gladiator yes. in the worst way. And in the end, Laurel Living does get Duraccio killed, so. Have to think about clumping up on top of this Dazzle in the later portions of these fights, but I mean, luckily, that's all the primal split, right? The second Ace comes out, he's still full. He's still got Manta Radiance. He's ready to party. He's gonna slap some extra kills down for the full team wipe here. Just when this game was slipping up a little bit of momentum, Game and Strike back, get themselves a full five-man wipe into the Roshan. We'll put an Aegis out on Quinn here, who's slowly getting towards that Ags. That team fight definitely helps. Still 500 off here, but that's gonna be a large damage ramp as the Shadow Step comes out. Look, Karachi is trying pickoff. to do this solo. It's a bit dangerous. Collapse. They're going to try and turn back around. They do have the Ice Blast that'll finish off here pretty easily. And Collapse, he's got to be careful of his damage. But Yatoro, he comes in, swipes down Duraccio. But the rest of the team is now here from Gaming Gladiators looking for the catch. But Collapse has already rolled away. Catch him. Ball taking Whoa. out. Oh, the hook shot. It's not quite enough. They have no stuns. Collapse breaks free. Straight through the man's heart. He did not care. He just walks it off. Can't really get much closer than that. And once more, Yatoro, he finds an angle in the fight, cleans up the Racho and gets the hell out. That is a full Silver Edge reveal done. And Looking now the Aegis is going to be taken away from Quinn. Ah, uh, the pickoff game is shifting, right? Yes, it is. They're not respecting the Shadow Blades, not respecting the aggression, but a Yule Scepter stalls him up, collapse, and Yutoro actually has more. BKB. They do catch the uh, Ancient Apparition. He's going to die pretty damn quickly there. Roll up. The Ruling's going to work, though. They Just need to stalling punish. out Yutoro. Now that his BKB is on cooldown, now their magic damage can really go to work, and they can slice and dice through that carry pretty damn quickly. But Poshka, obviously, he doesn't have much hope of living through this. So the fight does turn against them.
Not the worst, though, for, for Team Spirit, I would say, just purely the fact that they're continuing to keep things a little even. And their other two cores are farming the map. Yes. And they've got to be happy with, like, you know, the next 10 minutes here. This is when the Dazzle and the Break are going to come online. They've recovered some of the lost net worth differential here. These heals get very spooky around the third to fourth item. And they're going to get them damn fast as Collapse is just farming up the map. But Yatoro's aggression used against him here. They'll get the return carry kill. That was a cocky move going up that hill and just taking the fight with his BKB. He, he can BKB TP there. Just opted. Blood for blood. Why not? We're in the arena. I love that Duraccio still not slowing down. He may die every once in a while, but he says, you know, ultimately the end game is okay with me. We're still getting some good trade-offs and bites. I'm still going to try and limit your split push oh, by collapse. going on whatever he can. Doesn't want to let him get away with a tier two for free. BKB, they stun. stick on top of him with the silence and the stuns. It's enough win. It's stunned up for so long. And now Tofu is going to be in some trouble as well. He pops his ultimate. That just kind of delays things a little bit, but there's no one coming to save him. If you're getting multiple ink swells off in these fights, it's probably going to win you the engagement. And right now you're just getting outnumbered at a tier two. You overextended on. Courier will die as well. No Brewmaster ultimate for that type of fight. As strong as Ace is right now with a full AC completed on top of everything else. He does want this ult to take the long engagement, right? He's the most farmed hero in this game right now. If you're gaming, you have to play around with what he wants to do, where he wants to take the fights, and what he can commit to. Otherwise, you're just creating an opening for Spirit to come in and pick you off. Yatoro once more looking for the initiation with two heroes dead. He will get scouted on an ob sentry. This is something that started happening in that game, too, where they managed to get, like, it was that one pick off on Celery, right? Where it's like they used the Chronosphere, picked off Celery, and it was like, okay, Chrono for a five position. But then they kept that going. You're like, okay, it's four versus five. Then they found another pickoff and another pickoff, and it just so quickly snowballed against them. Game of Gladiators, it gotta be where Team Spirit will keep this aggression on point if they think they have the advantage. And another Tormentor swiftly dealt with from Laurel and the, the Courier brothers over here. That'll just be his Chaos Bolt is all the more deadly for some of these supports. And we can see how Yatoro wants to take these fights, right? Create confusion with, with his ult going through on lanes. Show up with a Silver Edge, get a pick off, maybe reset. He doesn't have to commit into the full five on five into the Brew and Pango, which could control him in that type of situation. Oh, he got stuck! Uh, oh, no! Landed on a pebble there. And as a result, Maposhka gets a pretty free TP on out of there. The smoke that's ruined, a Rolling Thunder that's used for nothing. Interesting little tree. Trees is powerful. <laughs> One of the primal forces in Dota. First cliffs, then trees. Quinn's having a... Yeah, Quinn's, ha Quinn's having a tough time with the terrain He's, he's today. fighting Team Spirit. He's fighting uh, the, the... The map, game. yeah. Happens to the best of us. Another pickoff that they will miss, which is time for the Midas's to go to work, right? Yep, they have yep. been cranking this whole time and climbing the charts. This game is a 1K net worth lead now at 32 minutes. Dead even. And everything depends on these team fights. Collapse just They're charging. They're the right kind of initiation here. A charge oh that God, hits both supports. Quinn on the run here. They immediately jump after him. Laurel chasing after him with that charge to be able to slow him down. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. Three dead on the side of Gaming Gladiators. And Team Spirit have changed this game. The narrative was supposed to be Gaming Gladiators controlling and seeing if they could end it. But Team Spirit have turned this all back around in the space of just this five to seven minutes. And this is the Spirit Breaker problem. What happens when you enter the mid game and this hero starts to take over the lanes, get mega farm, and suddenly one charge, you're down half your HP. Inkswell just makes this combo even more oppressive. The only real answer is you just start the fight on your terms with the primal split going in with a haunt and delete the supports. Create a situation where you have numbers advantage and even when the charge comes through, you don't care because you have the longevity and ace to deal with it. If you're just getting caught in the open like that, it's a death sentence. And right now, Collapse is just running the map, literally. He is getting six slotted very fast. Yeah. And the question is, do you have good late game answers to the Spirit Breaker here if you're gaming? Outside of tossing him in the air, dispelling him before BKB. Not really, right? None of those traditional answers like a Shadow Demon or the Soulbind, which is on Team Spirit's side. Yep. And that'll be a problem, especially if Collapse is able to use that charge to kill those Brutalings. That charge damage is pretty heavy. 31 to 22, 4,000 net worth lead for Team Spirit. 
as they've managed to turn this game around and continue to dodge attempts by Game and Gladiators. You can see the wind has been taken out of the Game and Gladiator sail. Duraccio's not playing with that same kind of fearless that he once was, where any time a hero showed up, he would just instantly jump and see if he could get the kill. Yeah, the map has just gone dark. Yeah. Right? You have one defensive off of your game, but those days of where you were picking people off on spirit side of the map have come and gone. You are now entering their portion of the game. You kind of have to get around this. You can go late here. Spectre plus the Brewmaster, especially with how much farm Ace has found in this game, are going to continue to scale pretty damn hard. And of course, you always have this option of like tossing the Dazzle in the fight with the Wind Panda and taking the fight that way. Yep. It's a pretty damn good option, a pretty good way to deal with Dazzle and a lot of the historic matchups between these two heroes. But you got to keep scaling on everybody. The Morta and the AA scale is really important here for gaming. If you can get a fourth core out of this Morta, which, you know, Tofu has a full link. It's, he's very far. None of it is, like, direct worth the damage, you know. I mean, he doesn't have, like, an Ags or Mjolnir or Silver Edge of his own, but can only expect so much. Still, it will deal a decent amount of damage. If you can lock heroes in the calling post BKB, that's the dream. A little pump fake action. Next fight coming up, all about Roshan. Ten seconds till that potential spawn time, and then we'll see when he's actually going to show up. Also, Celery went back for this Ancient Apparition Blink, something we've seen develop in this meta. He is looking for that AA Blast on the big course. The Dazzle and the CK especially, that is who he wants to hit. Cannot get Snowball dodged. You can't really just AA ult some random supports. It's not going to be good enough to win the fight. Need to connect this ult on a big target and collapse. He's just going to lead the charge with Bulldoze here. Not afraid of too much while both carries on the other side of the map. Look at him just running in there. This is a fight without Yatoro. Oh, that ward somehow slips past detection. Oh, no, no, no he's got it. Brace Lincoln dispel. gets him with the dispel on the Yule Scepter, but it is going to cost Celery his life. He does have a buyback. He's going to play for it. Quinn off the mark there with his blink in, trying to hit some heroes, but they've already popped their BKBs and are resetting a little bit. Celery, he's going to try and walk back into this fight. He's got to be careful, though. He may get caught by Collapse. He spots it. Found the and again. In the tower. Yeah, that Ancient Apparition's gone. No more Ice Blast for you to be able to use. Ace has to use his ultimate. He knew. Yatoro was gunning for him there, Stintly and he could have been chain stunned up. Now they back away. Primal Split being used. If they can get everybody out, it's a dream for Team Spirit. Collapse is making that momentum, though. Push back by the Void Panda. Now hit by the Orkin. If they can kill Collapse, that'd be great. But he has so many dispels and so many heals. Spirit turn. jumping in. Go for the back line. The Pango's been caught, and Yatoro, he destroys him so instantly. Now turns his damage on to Durant. Oh, oh, back charge. by Collapse. A charge on through. Tofu, who just managed to get the four staff down to the low ground, does get a dead shot on the Collapse. But he's still pretty damn healthy, and they can't turn this one around. It is all Team Spirit, and they will feast on the Brewmaster last. Team fight decision making, just off the charts here. I mean, the kiting, dealing with the ult, they just make it look way too easy right now. And so many charges going through from Collapse. He is looking for the high five, and he will get it here. That was a fight for Roshan, but it is now a fight to hit high ground. I mean, that's Game a fight for ages. Uh-oh. What are you going to do if you don't have the buybacks or you're not willing to commit them right here? You don't even have the primal split if Ace is back. He doesn't even have the buyback. You A are short. Massive swing. Short on so many levels right now. Collapse even ulting a Brulee because he knew the Lincolns was coming back up on Tofu just to get back in there and get another charge through. Lead is absolutely exploding here for Team Spirit as they are sensing potentially a second Aegis going their way. One, One more lane of Barracks and a Roshan to take. Team Spirit, they still have time on the clock. 30 seconds left on the Brewmaster's revive. That is more than enough to get this Aghanim Scepter and a Crystalis. They were winning that fight. Now they've got like 10,000 more gold of items to be able to use with an Aegis and Cheese and all these other items flowing in. Now you've got a Grim Choke with an Aghanim Scepter. Silver Edge fully complete. They are creating too many problems. You can't deal with any of them. Level 25 also coming out on Collapse. So even more bashes on top of the Ags. If you thought this Spirit Breaker was causing you problems before, he's going to be causing them double now. Just no control for him. And he's way too tanky to try and burst. Duraccio is just not doing enough single target DPS at this point. You're going to need one hell of a long drawn out fight. Team Spirit, uh, crazy. They're up 2-0 in this series. They, they're down in this game three. They have a 5% chance to make it back in. Sure, they could just give it up, say, well, guys, it's the best of five. We can give them one. But they claw their way back into this game are now in a commanding position to potentially 3-0 the challengers in Gaming Gladiators.
That is what makes this team absolutely terrifying at this point in tournaments. And we saw everybody from all these teams talk about it, right? If you get ahead of this team, what does it mean? It just means when they might beat you, it feels even worse. And right now, this game has turned itself on the head, as you said. Over 20k lead. Age is up for four minutes. So it'll be up to Yatoro in terms of whether he wants to push the high ground during this interval and try and end this game. He feels like he needs even more. There's still a lot of room to grow here. They did finish up an Ags on Maposhka as well, so now you can start to get some dark portraits in the mix. Just add even more chaos and confusion to the fight. More damage sources. Yatoro. Win. Blink it away. No fear. Can't get caught. Otherwise, that is welcoming Team Spirit into your base. Charge complete, half his health. Yule Scepter is gonna be used. Nicely breaking with that Lincolns, but he didn't use that bulldoze towards the end there. And these are just free. They have the ways to get collapse out every time. There's a Lincolns, there's a Swell, there's Four Staff's Grave. Yatoro's gonna take his chance to take first down. Oh man! Before you can even complete the sentence, he's already gone. They do have an Ice Blast, though, that's pretty well positioned. Jirachio's already cleaned up the Grimstroke. It's not too bad, but Jirachio, he needs to get out of there. It's, oh my god, that's so much. Buy back from it's the too Spectre. much damage. Spectre has to win this now, but he has to be has to get that something. Dazzle. They have to be able to take away this Aegis at the bare minimum. Surely they have to go for more. They have to risk it. Collapse is going to charge on Drew to make sure you can't sit up on Yutora. Now Yutora will turn back around on you. He's ready for that fight. He pulls back into Durachio. This could be it for Gaming Gladiators. And let's find the way out of it. Quinn's dead next. Now Durachio, a dive back for him. He falls. Tofu's pulled back in. He is pulled to his death, down into his grave. Quinn, last man standing for Gaming Gladiators. It will be a one-man stand against what is looking like the best team in the world right now, absolutely, as they take a commanding team fight victory inside Gaiman's base. No buyback on the Brewmaster there. They just delete the highest net worth hero for Gaiman straight off the bat. No turnaround potential, and you are running out of lives. You are running out of games to play here as Team Spirit. They don't want to just be the best team in the world. They want to prove that they are one of the best teams ever to grace this stage right now. And they are showing why. They're going to go for the Megas, play it safe. And Ags finished on Mira. He's about to kick this team straight out of the tournament if he has his way. And they're going to go right for the throne. Quick reactions from Quinn. Has to blink away. Just one little opening is all it takes with Mira lurking from behind. Ace back up. We'll see what he can do to stall this out. Gonna need one hell of a primal split here. Yatoro starts pushing forward. Mira doesn't quite get it there, and they actually stop the Spear Breaker right in front of their base, but they're locked in by the shards. Quinn's able to hop around it, but now the Slipwalk, it holds him in place. He can't do anything against that, but at least the Brewmaster can. Get and they the kick him in. The throne is exploded, and now he's been pulled Welcome back. Welcome to hell. Oh, no. It is too much for Gaming Gladiators to be able to handle. They are not going to be able to get through this. They have to pray to get out, but the Cathedral is merciless. It is Team Spirit who are unstoppable. They will.